Hi, this is Vic, and I'm starting off this presentation the way I start off many of my presentations. That is, with a stock photograph of my 2014 Cadillac ELR. And what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to start off this presentation talking about the charge port that you see just behind the steering wheel on the driver's side. The charge port is referred to as the J1772. It's a J1772 interface. It's very common in the automotive industry. Lots of automobile manufacturers use the exact same interface. So it's not unique to, to Chevrolet or General Motors for that matter. Um, the Chevrolet Volt used the same, uses the same interface as well. And the Chevrolet Bolt, which I've looked at a second time, uses the same interface. And the Bolt is pure electric. It is not capable of burning any gasoline at all. It does not have an engine. And here you see a shot of the Chevrolet Bolt. Now I've looked at the Bolt a second time. And I've decided, since looking at it now, for this second time, that I like it better than the first time I looked, I examined the vehicle. Uh, I still think the body styling is, is a bit, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. But it's it's kind of, it's kind of odd in a way. But I'm looking at it as strictly as a as a second vehicle. Basically, a runabout, something I would drive around the city, in most of the time. And if I needed to drive 60, 70 miles outside of town, I would do I would drive it that that distance as well, because it it represents a lots lots and lots of convenience to me and money saving. The reason I say it represents convenience and saving money is because driving a car such as the Chevrolet Bolt would cause me to never need to stop at a gas station again. I would not need to stop at a gas station in order to refuel my vehicle. Now, how would this car get refueled? The same way I re-energize my Cadillac ELR. The difference is the range on this vehicle is over 200 miles. So therefore, I would not be required to plug it in every day like I do my ELR. I plug in my ELR every night because I want to minimize the amount of gasoline that I burn. Because this vehicle gets over 200 miles on one full charge, I would not have to plug it in every night. And speaking of the range on one full charge, how far can a typical car go, typical gasoline powered go on one full tank of gas? Any, it's probably anywhere between two to three hundred miles. Yeah, approximately three hundred miles, I'm gonna say. Uh, and how low does the average person wait for their gas level to get before they stop to put gas into their car? I'm going to say that most people don't wait until they get next to E or next to empty. Uh, if you get if you get near a quarter of a quarter of a tank of gas, they probably will fill it up, or they probably will add some gas to it if it's close to a quarter tank. Now, I I talk about filling up or adding gasoline to a gas-powered vehicle because I'm going to talk about charging the, the bolt. The bolt comes with a, well, the, co the bolt has three different ways of charging, or three different modes of charging. You can go with the standard mode, uh, let's see, and this is the J1772 port. This is a close-up. Uh, you can go with the standard mode, and by plugging it into a 120-volt outlet, and that's going to give you about four miles per hour. Now you say four miles per hour, that's not very much. No, it's not much. But considering that it has over 200 miles on one full charge, that's not a big, that's not a big deal. I would drive the car and maybe every couple of days, every three, four, five days, plug it in. Now, as far as this 
1772, all that goes. This black part is the same interface that's on the Chevy Volt and my and the Cadillac ELR. The orange cover that you see is the is the ports for the DC fast charging. Right now they're covered with that orange. <coughs> right now they're covered with that orange cover because they're not being used. Now DC fast charging delivers approximately 90 EV miles of range per hour. And there's and you can also use the there's an there's a third option. You can also go with um, the level two chargers that are found that use the J1772 port as well. They're high power chargers, and they're they're faster than plugging into an electrical outlet in in, in your home. Uh, they deliver about 25 miles of range per hour. And that, but the the unique thing is you, you don't. I wouldn't have to ever go back to a gas station. I could plug my car in. If I see it's getting low, when I, when I come in, whenever I pull in in the evening or afternoon, I could plug it in, go cook dinner, a couple hours go by, and um, I can check on it, and I can drive it again. Or I can go to sleep. And, but the bottom line is you can do whatever you want to do while the car is refueling or recharging. If you want to go to lunch to a restaurant, if you want to want to walk down the street or walk across the street to a bar, to a, to a uh, restaurant that you see uh, while the car is refueling or recharging, you can do that. You don't have to stand next to the car while it recharges. All you have to do, all I would do, is set my alarm so that it's just like I do when I leave my car anyway. I turn my alarm on so that if anybody tampers with the car. The alarm goes off. Anybody unplugs the charge card, charge cord, the alarm goes off. That's a piece of cake. So it's it's convenient in that area in that you don't have to stand there and pump electricity into it. You can just do whatever you want to do while the car is charging. Like in my case, again, I'm gonna re repeat myself. In my case, I would um uh, just plug it in when I pull into my garage at home. And that that would be it. So it's it's and if and if one wanted to, you could manage your charging time when you plug in your plug the car in at home. You could manage it to the point where you could look at the electricity rates. When are the rates lower in your neighborhood or at, yeah in your neighborhood or in your city? You know, there's peak, there's off peak hours, and you can program the car to uh, start charging based on those types of things, or based on when you're gonna leave. And I, and there's a phone app that there's there's a phone app that you can get for your iPhone. I use the iPhone as an example because I'm an iPhone user. But there's a phone app that you can get to uh, in the car. Can and will communicate with the with the phone, and that they can talk to each other. Uh, uh, so you can you can monitor it uh, as far as the state of charge, how many miles are left on it, if it's full. Those types of things. Another benefit that you have with having a Chevrolet Bolt is that you would the per, the purchaser would receive a charge point charge card, a charge point card. I own a charge point card because I use it when I stop to charge my. ELR in a public in a public charge point, public charge station. Uh, usually, those stations are well. The vast majority of the time, those stations deliver higher, are capable of delivering higher uh, 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 rates of, of charge to the vehicle. And most of the time, they are free. There's a couple of them that I've had to pay for, but most of the time they're free. So essentially, that's another way of saving more money. In that uh, I'm recharging or refueling my vehicle for free, and that's that's an additional benefit of having an electric vehicle. And I thoroughly enjoy that. And I'm going to go back to the full shot, full full body shot of the of the Bolt. And again, this car I think is would be a good, excellent runabout. It's a nice car. 
uh, and the the paint color, the paint scheme on the exteriors, for some reason, seems to affect my my viewing of the vehicle. Um, I suppose that may be normal with a lot of people. But the car is not it's not totally a bad car. I looked at the car a second time, much more objectively, I, I believe. Hi, this is Vic, and I am praying, I'm truly, truly hoping that I can start some type of movement here. And that is cyber that is fight like a Spartan. Men, there is an alternative to surgery. If you are confirmed to have prostate cancer, you do not have to have surgery. Ten years ago, in 2007, after two doctors recommended surgery for me, I searched and searched for an alternative, and I went to the website that you're looking at right now, cyberknife.com, to find an alternative to surgery. And only after talking to the doctor in the hospital that worked with the cyberknife did I, did I decide to go through the cyber knife treatment. I would not, I, I put off surgery as long as I possibly could. And I spoke with the doctor that actually worked in the hospital that had the cyber knife facility. And he did a test and he confirmed. And what he told me was the cyber knife was, was a good treatment for me, that he could treat me with the cyber knife. So I chose the cyber knife. I found a hospital. Well, first of all, if you go to cyberknife.com, they have a search feature in there where you can search you can tell the search engine how far to look it can go from you can select five miles or 250 miles away from your zip code like you tell it to search in the US and then you type in your zip code and you can tell it to go as far as 250 miles or whatever and I it, as it turned out there was a, a hospital that had has a cyber knife facility 20 miles away from me my treatment went like this I got up early to go to work with, and left enough time to lay down in the bed. My treatment plan was for 45 minutes. Yours could be different. Mine was for 45 minutes. So I had to lay still for 45 minutes, completely dressed, no surgery, no cutting, and while this robot, while this machine rotated around me. And when they told me they were finished, and it generally took about 45 minutes, when they told me they were finished, I would get up and they said, okay, you can leave now. And that was it. I got back into my car and I drove to work. I worked, that's right, I worked and did anything and everything that I wanted to do. There was no limitations placed on me. And that's my push for the cyber knife. Men, we have a tool to kill and defeat prostate cancer. Fight like a Spartan, no surrender, no retreat.